Hello and welcome to the video. This is Matthew and we're going to look at question 9 which is a 50 mark question on probability, functions and a small bit of trigonometry. So part A tells us that Jack is at an archery range. He shoots arrows at a target from distances that range from 25 to 90 meters. The probability of hitting the target with a single shot when firing from a distance d meters is p where p is equal to 3 over 200 times by 90 minus d which is the distance. So each shot is fired independently. So that means that one shot has no impact on the likelihood of the next shot to either hit or miss. So then A part one is worth five marks. It tells us that Jack shoots at the target from a distance of 40 meters. And it's asking us to find the probability that he hits the target. So basically D is 40 and we have to find P. So this is straightforward enough. We just have to put in 40 for D and then solve it for P. So that's going to be P is equal to three over 200 times by 90 minus 40. So in other words, it's going to be equal to 3 over 200 times by 50. So 50 by 3 over 200 will be 150 over 200, which is equal to 3 over 4. So the probability that Jack hits the target from a distance of 40 meters is 3 over 4. So now we're going to have a look at question A, part 2, and this is worth 10 marks. So we're told that Jack shoots 8 arrows from a distance of 40 meters. We have to work out the probability now that he hits the target for the fourth time on his last shot. So basically, with the first seven arrows, he hits the target three times, and then on his eighth shot, he will hit the target as well. So to do this, we're going to use a Bernoulli trial. We can use a Bernoulli trial as we know that they're all independent of each other. So every shot is independent and there's no impact on the likelihood of the next shot, either being a hit or a miss. And there's only two outcomes, there's either a hit or a miss. So to get a Bernoulli trial, we need the probability of success, which we worked out in A part one. So in other words, a probability of hit, and that was 3 over 4. And a probability of a miss is going to be 1 minus 3 over 4. So in other words, the probability that Jack misses is 1 over 4. So now for the Bernoulli trial, from his first 7 arrows, we want him to hit the target 3 times. So it's going to be 7 choose 3, times by the probability of a hit, so that's 3 over 4, to the power of 3, as we want him to hit it 3 times, and times of that by 1 over 4 to the power of 4, as we want him to have 4 misses. And whatever answer we get here, we're going to multiply that by... 3 over 4 as we want him to hit his 8th shot on target. So we can do this on the calculator. So 35 times by 3 over 4 to the power of 3 by 1 over 4 to the power of 4. And that gives us 945 over 16,384. But remember, we have to multiply that by 3 over 4. And that gives us 0.04325866699. So correct to six decimal places, that's 0.043259. So that's the probability that from 8 arrows he gets the fourth hit on the eighth shot. So that's the answer for A part two. And now we're going to have a look at A part three. And this is also worth 10 marks. So we're told here that Jack shoots 20 arrows from a distance of X meters. And we have to find the value of X if Jack has an 80% chance of hitting the target at least once. So we have to give our answer correct to one decimal place. So we have to solve for X, we have to work out for X. But before that, we're going to need to work out a few other things. We're going to need to work out the probability of a hit. But the first thing we're going to do here is we know that the probability of hitting at least one is going to be one minus the probability of hitting none. So we know that the probability of hitting at least one is going to be 80% or 0 0.8. So from that, we can work out that the probability of 20 misses is going to be 0 0.2. So if we know that the probability of 20 misses is 0 0.2, we can use a Bernoulli trial to work out the probability of one singular miss, and from that, work out the probability of a hit. So we're going to do a Bernoulli trial now, where there's 20 misses, and from that, we'll be able to work out the probability of one singular miss, as we know that the Bernoulli trial should be equal to 0 0.2. So from 20 shots, there is no hits, so it's 20 choose 0 and the probability of a hit to the power of zero. We don't know what the probability of a hit is, so we're just gonna leave it as probability of hit to the power of zero, times by the probability of a miss to the power of 20. Now be careful, it's the probability of one singular miss to the power of 20, not the probability of 20 misses, which is what we got just there. Now we know that when we evaluate that, that should be equal to 0 0.2, and we can now work it out. So 20 to zero is going to be one, as any number choose 0 is always 1, and also the probability of a hit to the power of 0 will also be 1, as any number to the power of 0 is 1, which means we're just left with the probability of a miss to the power of 20 is equal to 0 0.2. So then I'm going to get the 20th root of 0 0.2, which is 0 0.92268. 
And now from that, I can work out the probability of a hit from X meters. So it's going to be one minus the probability of a miss. So therefore the probability of a hit is 0 0.07732. So now we can say that P should be equal to 0 0.07732. And we're going to leave D as the variable. And then we'll solve for D in the formula. And that will give us X. So remember, P is equal to 3 over 200 times by 90 minus D. So now we're going to have 0 0.07732 is equal to 3 over 200 times by 90 minus D. So now we're going to multiply both sides by 200 to get rid of the fraction on the right-hand side. And then on the left-hand side, we get 15.464, and that's equal to 3 times by 90 minus D. So now I can divide both sides by 3, which gives me 5.15467 on the left-hand side, and that's equal to 90 minus D. So now I just need to minus 90 from both sides, which gives me minus 84.84533 is equal to minus D. So multiplying both sides by minus one, as we want D to be positive, so then we get 84.84533 equal to D, but correct to one decimal place, we get D is equal to 84.8 meters. And that's the value for X, so that's how far away Jack was standing to have an 80% chance of at least one hit. So that's the answer for A part three, and now we're gonna move on to part B of the question. So part B tells us that Jack shoots an arrow from a distance 45 meters away from the target. The path of the arrow is described by the function h of x is equal to 1.36 plus 0.082x minus 0.002x squared. So h is the height of the arrow and then x is the horizontal distance it traveled. So we're shown the graph of the function. A is the point where the arrow was launched and B is the target. So then B part 1 is worth 5 marks. And this wants us to find the height from which the arrow was launched. So the height at which the arrow was launched will be where x is equal to 0. So we're trying to find h is 0. And h is 0 will be equal to 1.36 plus 0 0.082 times by 0 minus 0 0.002 times by 0 squared. So that's going to mean that h is 0 is equal to 1.36 plus 0 minus 0. So h is 0 will just be equal to 1.36 meters. So the arrow was launched from 1.36 meters. So now we're going to have a look at b part 2 and this is worth 10 marks. So it says, using calculus methods, find the greatest height reached by the arrow. So to find the maximum or minimum value of a function, you differentiate it and put it equal to zero. So in other words, we have to differentiate h of x and then put our answer equal to zero. So h of x again is equal to 1.36 plus 0.082x minus 0.002x squared. And differentiating that, we get h prime of x is equal to 0.082 minus 0.004x. So now I'm going to put that equal to zero and solve for x. So I'm going to move the minus 0.004x over to the right hand side and it'll go over as a positive. And now I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.004. So then on the left hand side I get 20.5 and on the right hand side I'm just left with x. So therefore 20.5 meters is equal to x. However, that's not the answer. We have to put in 20.5 for x into the original function. So basically we have to get h of 20.5. Then we get 1.36 plus 0 0.082 times by 20.5 minus 0 0.002 times by 20.5 squared. And evaluating that, we get 2.2005, but correct to one decimal place, that's 2.2 meters. So the greatest height reached by the arrow is 2.2 meters. Now, be careful. A lot of people would have stopped there once they found x, but remember, you have to put that x value back into the original function, and then that will give you the answer that you want. So now we're going to have a look at part C, and part C is also worth 10 marks. So we're told that Jack's bow has a string of length 120 centimeters. When he pulls the string back with the arrow, the string extends in length by 20%. However, the shape of the bow remains the same. So the question now is that given that the arrow is centered on the wire, find the measure of the obtuse angle formed by the two halves of the string. Give your answer to two decimal places. So in other words, it's looking for this angle here. So in order to work out that, I'm going to use trigonometry. So I'm going to have to create two right angled triangles. And to do that, I'm going to draw a vertical line down from where the string connects to the bow. And I'm going to work out what half the angle is. And then whatever half the angle is, I'm going to double that to work out the full angle A. So I'm now working out this smaller angle, which I'm going to label as theta. And whatever I work out theta to be, I'm going to double my answer. So the length of the string was 120 centimeters, but it increased by 20%. So to work out the new length, I'm going to multiply 120 by 120% or 1.2. And this is equal to 144 centimeters. So that means that the new length of the string, when he's pulling it, is 144 centimeters. So to find the length that we want, we're going to half that, which is obviously going to be 72 centimeters. So that's this distance here. So now I've drawn in a new vertical yellow line which exactly matches the string that would have been there before he pulled it. And we know that that was 120 centimeters. So to find out what half that is, obviously we just half it, which is 60 centimeters. And now we have a right angled triangle and we can use our trigonometric ratios to work out the angle theta. 
and then we're going to double the answer. So remember, the side across from the 90 degrees is the hypotenuse. So in this case, 72 is equal to the hypotenuse. The side across from the angle is the opposite side, which is going to be the 60. Then the third side is the adjacent side. So it's going to be this side down here. And obviously the angle is just going to be theta. So here we have the opposite side and the hypotenuse. So when you have O and H, that is sine. So basically sine theta will be equal to 60 over 72. And then we're going to solve for theta. So that means that theta is equal to sine inverse of 60 over 72. So let's work that out. So make sure your calculator is in degrees and then it's going to be shift sine and then 60 over 72. And that will give us 56.44269024 degrees. So therefore the angle directed to two decimal places is 56.44. But remember, we have to multiply this by two to get the total angle on both sides. So 56.44 degrees by two will give us 112.88 degrees. And that's the answer that we're looking for. So that's the obtuse angle that is formed by the two halves of the string when Jack pulls it. So that's our answer for part C, the final part of the question and the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching and I hope I helped.